Getting started with Office 365. Open Internet Explorer. Then click on the star in the upper right hand corner to access your favorites. Select Office 365 to open the website. If you're at home, use Chrome. Next step is to log in. Your login would be your first and last name at usd475.onmicrosoft.com. Your password is the password for your computer login. I like to check Keep Signed In. And this takes you to the online version of Office 365. Next thing you do is you go and get Office 365 ready. So you're going to go to the drop down triangle next to your name in the upper right hand corner. And you're going to select About Me. Once you select that, you're going to edit your profile. You only have to make one change. So you can either add a picture or you can add information about me, what your job title is. Then you're going to do save all and close. I'm just going to cancel because I've already done that. All right, ready for step four. The next thing we do is we click on the blue square with the nine white boxes. It's the upper left hand corner. This is your shortcut to all Office 365 apps. Select OneDrive under the word documents. Now find the sync icon and click on it and it will sync your cloud version of OneDrive to your laptop. This app will allow you to save files up to one terabyte in size which is a thousand gigabytes. You can have it show your files as it's syncing and it'll open your Windows Explorer so you can see where you will find them when you're ready to go look. It's under your favorites and it says OneDrive for business and of course I have a lot of things there but you'll just have a couple. Okay now that that's synced we're ready to go. So step five click on that blue square again in the upper left hand corner. This time select sites. Click on the gear in the upper right hand corner and choose site contents. Now you're going to select OneNote class notebook creator. It's that purple box with the N on it. And we made it to step seven. We're going to create a class notebook. Now you're going to name your notebook. What would you like to name it? So you're going to type in the name. Click Next. And here's where it shows you um, all the different sections. We have the collaborative space where everybody has access the content library, and then the student notebooks. Now you get to choose whether you want to add another teacher. If you're sharing with someone, you would type their email address. We're not sharing this one, so we'll go straight to add student names. The best way to do to add names is to type in their last name first with a comma, and then their first either first initial or type their name out, and then they will automatically find it in the network. You can add your entire class at a time, or you can just add a few students and go back and add them later. It's usually easiest to add them all at the same time. I'm going to type next. You can decide what your folders are going to look like. If you're using this with students, then many of those folders might be the ones you want, but since we're using this with staff, we're going to choose some different ones. So I'm just going to name the folders. The advantage is when you put the folders in up front, that means you don't have to go in and add them to each individual person. The program will automatically set them up for you. 
Keep in mind, if you are a little um, anal about them being in alphabetical order, you'll need to put them in that way because if, whichever way you type them in initially will be the order that you will find them when you go to your OneNote. When you're finished adding folders, you hit Next. And this will be the teacher view and the student view, what it will look like when they log in. We're going to create our notebook. This is your sharing link. So you can copy this and save it for in case somebody loses it, uh, put it in an email. I always put mine in OneNote to keep track of them so I don't have to find those emails. You can go back to your main menu, but the best way is to scroll up and click on your notebook icon, and that will open it in your online version if you've never opened um, a OneNote before. And then you can tell it to open in the OneNote, which is the full program that's on your computer. Mine automatically opens there because I've set it up that way. And this is what our class OneNote looks like. It takes a little bit for it to sync. And there's your collaborative section where you, everyone can work. There's your content area where people can go get information that you provide them. And then each person that you add will have their separate section that's private just for them with any of those uh, tabs that you established. The very last thing to do is go to File. You want to make sure you share it correctly so everybody has editing rights. So you're going to click on the settings box. And you're going to type in the email addresses. I always uncheck the box so they don't have to log in. Uh, make sure that, you, that it is set for edit. If it's read only, they won't be able to use it the way you're wanting them to. And then you're going to click share. That will send out an email and a sharing link for everyone to click on to open your version of the class notebook. And it shows who it's shared with and what their properties are. You can see that they can edit, and that means they can edit their portions.